Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our interview with Chris Chebara. He is a CTO and co-founder of Athena Security, an AI company with a mission to help save lives. Athena created a turnkey video hardware and software initially for active shooter response via uh, AI gun detection, but uh, the pandemic has resulted in additional uses, including elevated uh, temperature detection and people counting using the same technology. So it is used by companies such as Apple and uh, Horizon Media. Chris, uh, thank you for coming to our interview today. Absolutely, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Chris, could you tell us a short story about your career path and uh, what brought you to where you are right now and what you guys at Athena Security are up to this day? Sure thing. So I started a company called Revel Systems about 10 years ago. Uh, about two years ago, we sold that company and we were uh, you know, just watching the news and figuring out what we wanted to do next with our next company. And all the kids were getting shot on TV and we're like, let's fix that problem, right? Um, we, we didn't like what was going on in the world, so we wanted to fix it. Um, so we made out and we said, let's, let's have AI actually uh, fix the actual problem and build a, a solution that could actually find weapons for schools um, as they're drawn, All right? That was really great. Uh, but what happened was all the clients were like, this is good, but we want concealed weapons detection also at our front doors. So we set out to start building a concealed weapons detection. And then of course, COVID hit. Um, so we quickly pivoted into temperature detection. Uh, that's what everybody was asking for at the time, of course. And the same technology we were using for concealed weapons detection, which is uh, um, thermal, thermal scanning used, was used for temperature scanning. So we just quickly made the product and we sold that. And now we just released our concealed weapons detection just a few months ago, and it's going really well and people are liking it. Um, it's certified by the U.S. government using the government standards, and it finds all the weapons 100% of the time. What's unique about our product is the fact that you can walk through with everyday items like a cell phone and keys and a backpack, and the system's not going to go off unless you have a weapon. You know, a lot of people try to fool this. You know, We get Secret Service people trying to fool it. They take apart the weapon, and they still get found when the barrel goes through. So we actually look for the barrel, the hardened steel is what we go after, and that's how we can tell the difference between a gun and a cell phone, and you can just walk right through. Mm -hmm. So you, uh, your company works in the field of uh, physical security, right? And uh, how does uh, AI uh, play a role in, in this uh, uh, solution? Sure thing. So the AI is used to tell the difference between a, a gun and a, a cell phone, right? So it uses artificial intelligence to be able to tell the difference between the different items. Uh, and that's the key here is to be able to do that because all the old metal detectors, you know, you have a cell phone, it will go off. You have to empty out your pockets. It takes forever. Um, so you're talking, you know, 15 seconds on an average person going through a metal detector with us. It's one second because you don't have to take all your stuff out. You just walk right through, which is the beauty of the system. Mm -hmm. uh, other things that we do, obviously, you know, we do pupil counting. We can count everything. All that's done through AI. Okay. Uh, how did you come to this solution? Because you probably, you can you describe, uh, because you were, uh, sure. I, I saw in your, <laughs> the, you be, have been uh, started uh, as an IT person and now you are in phys physical solution uh, field, uh, uh, more, more uh, like AI uh, uh, solution. Can you? Sure can thing. You... Sure thing. So we were watching TV, like I said, we were watching TV one day and all the kids were getting shot in, in Vegas. Um, on the different schools that were getting shot up and we wanted to make a difference. So we decided to use AI to actually find the weapons in the camera feeds of the schools. So we're in a couple of schools right now. You can see us. Um, and what will happen is when you pick out the weapon, if it's drawn, at least 60% will be able to notify the police and then call them directly to that spot and give them information. The cool thing about our platform is it doesn't matter where they are, what camera they're on. It's going to tell the police in real time where they're located you know, how many weapons there are, how many people there are. So it gives a lot of information to the police. And that's all done through AI technologies. Now, that was our first product that we launched back in 2018. Switched to concealed weapons because all the clients back then were like, this is great, but we really need concealed weapons because if the, the weapon's not drawn, we're not going to detect it, right? So we set out to do uh, artificial intelligence for concealed weapons. And that's what we came out with just about two months or two, three months ago. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, how does it uh, work now uh, in the COVID uh, 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 so time solution? Because you also trying to measure uh, temperature, right? Uh, for it's works Correct. for kind of an airport solution or what, whatever uh, technique. Correct. Yeah. So we're in airports with temperature detection. We're in hospitals. We're in you know you name it. Anyone that needs temperature detection, uh, we're we're there. It can do one person at a time, six feet apart. We follow all the government standards, of course, and it uses uh, thermal visioning to actually get the actual temperature of the person. It uses a what they call a, a you know a standard. Uh, or we call the HSRP device, which tells the actual thermal device what is the temperature of that space and time right there. Um, and that way the camera knows if the temperature deviates throughout the day, it's always going to have an accurate temperature using that reference point. So the reference point is key when you're using a temperature detection system. If, you're, if your system doesn't have one, that's not going to be accurate. So make sure you have one if you're going to use it. Mm -hmm. uh, I wonder how... Uh, uh... How you been able to achieve this uh, um, in so a short uh, time frame for two or three years? Uh, you were able to put on the market uh, such a, a distinguished uh, solution. What is your <laughs> key so yeah. secret? So without uh, name, uh, kind of details in your secret sauce, maybe just uh, some uh, understanding. What what uh, what what sure. are you proud of? <laughs> Sure. So I go back to Yoda saying, do or do not. <laughs> Wait, there is no try. So basically, it's a matter of just putting your foot down and, and going and happen, right? We had three weeks when COVID hit to, to, to come out with the product um, before, you know, it was over. <laughs> um, and, and we did it, right? We did it in two weeks and we, and we pushed out a product really quick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, I would like to ask you a personal, a personal opinion. What is the commonly held belief uh, as it relates to a kind of physical security field uh, that you strongly disagree with? I think the fact of separating, you know, physical security with cybersecurity is a big mistake for companies. And I think that you're going to see a lot more convergence in the future because there's too much risk happening if you, if you keep them separated, right? All your physical security guys have no clue about cyber typically. And that's a big mistake because everything in, in physical security is now connected, you know, um, to your connection, your internet connection at your office. So you don't want to separate them anymore. You want to bring them together because everything intertwines. So I think that's a really big risk for companies right now. I think a lot of companies are realizing that that's a big risk and they're merging the two departments right now. All right. Right, absolutely. So, and looking uh, broadly in your industry, what what are the ma major trades trends in uh, this field of both uh, physical and cyber security, and what you expect uh, will come uh, into fruition fruition in the coming few years? Sure. Uh, like, like I was saying, I think everything is going to merge. Uh, everything is going to combine as far as physical and uh, cyber security. It's just it's just evolving in that direction. So I, I see that happening. That's going to be a big trend. Uh, the other trend, I think, is stepping up on both, you know, both physical and cyber security. There's been a lot of shootings, a lot of um, board meetings. You know, people are, are frantic about now. We're seeing a lot of pickup on board meetings. People are buying at the system because they're afraid someone's going to come in shooting up, um, you know, hospitals. You know, there's a lot of shootings basically everywhere. The ER departments, so the gang member comes in and starts shooting because um, they're gang members in the hospital. I, I, there's a lot of, I think, physical stuff that's about, is, is happening as we speak right now, and everyone's upgrading their security because there's just a lot of events happening that people aren't aware of and people are starting to be aware of. So it's, it, it's a big deal. And I think the future is just going to be you know, tightening up both cyber. Obviously, there's a lot of cyber attacks um, and then physical attacks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for ri for average uh, risk manager that uh, listen to this interview, maybe a risk manager that uh, works in the company or in the compliance uh, professional, uh, what would be his uh, first uh, first uh, steps to implement this uh, your vision? Uh, what do, what do you think? Sure. So it's an entryway security system. So basically, you would take a look at your entryway, create a. Uh, you know, entry point solution that's going to safeguard their customers and their employees. Some people have 
two entry waypoints. Some people have one. You're going to funnel them in uh, into one if you have to. And then, and then there's a lot of churches implementing this right now in New York because of certain you know attacks that have happened in New York in these churches. So I think everyone just needs to step it up and you know call us or call a company and get get your get your security going as far as your entryway security both for COVID, which I don't think is going to be going away anytime soon, and for uh, weapons. Mm -hmm. So for uh, maybe finalizing if, uh, finalizing, if someone who is listening uh, would like to, to walk away with one or two major takeaways, would, what would it be? Of course, you told, told us about uh, this merge of uh, physical and uh, uh, cyber, maybe some, something else that would be kind of... Takeaway points. Sure thing. Um, you know, choke points are really um, a key factor when you're dealing with entryway security. So you want to see where your choke points are and then obviously put your systems in those spaces to make it easier for yourself. Um, what else can I talk about? Um, you know, obviously evaluate your risks. You know, a lot of companies, when they look at us and they look at how much money it's going to cost them with PR, how much money it's going to cost them with loss of people wanting to come into their facility because there was um, an incident uh, at their facility is, is huge. You know, a lot of these companies, they weigh that and they're like, well, obviously we don't want that to happen. If it does, it's going to hurt us a lot more than if we buy a system like that to safeguard us. So obviously a lot of places will, will counteract um, the risk factor and put a system like this in just because of they don't want to deal with something like that and have to deal with the consequences. Mm -hmm. All right. I ask this question um, uh, all of my guests uh, because I'm running a global risk community. We are a community of uh, 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 more than uh, 30,000 uh, risk managers. So uh, what should we do as a risk community to oh, uh, kind of better understand this uh, complex world of risk? Got it. Uh, you should definitely analyze everything, um, you know, get demos from different companies, see which product is the best for you obviously make sure they follow government standards you know we're the only ones actually that actually follow the government standards 100 percent of the pass 100 percent of the time so you want to look at the risk factor of going with a company that isn't a government standard uh, so you want to take a look at that you want to take a look at you know what kind of objects set the system off you know other competitors out there will set it off on a cell phone or two cell phones or a pair of keys so you don't want to have to deal with that obviously because that's going to slow down your line into your facilities um, and, you know, look at the risk of not having a system, right? I mean, it's going to cost you or companies, you know, millions of dollars in PR. And obviously people won't, won't, won't feel safe and want to come to work. It'll cause a lot of chaos, basically, if there's an incident in your facility. So you want to look at those types of risks and what it could cause. Uh, you know, it might not cost millions of dollars in some facilities. And sometimes it will cost a million dollars uh, who you are and what kind of, um, you know, funds that you get through your facility and where they're coming from. Okay, great. So maybe uh, that, that were all my questions. If I forgot something, uh, would you like to add uh, something to that will benefit our audience? Um, yeah, I think I'm good. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Chris. It was a very interesting interview. Hope uh, you have a great success uh, with your uh, a very important uh, product uh, that can have sell, sell, self, uh, save life. Uh. Thank you. Yeah, we're out to help save lives. So we're, we're, we're doing it now. So come join us. <laughs> Absolutely great. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.